Hello, my name is Giovanni Pizzi and I'm going to present you the Materials Cloud. Before I introduce the portal, I want to discuss a bit some challenges for uh, computational materials science and in particular our vision for an open science platform. In computational materials science research, if you want to do high throughput research, you end up organizing a very large number of calculations and you have to deal with a lot of corner cases. The theory is not adequate, your code might crash, your infrastructure might go down. And so you have many strings to pull and you have to coordinate all of this. The second part is reproducibility. You want to keep track of what you calculate and you want to keep track of how you did it. And you want to make sure that other people can reproduce your research. This could be within a research group that say, Alice, a new postdoc in the group, can reproduce what Bob did last year. But this can be even yourself or can be for people outside your research group that want to reproduce your research. AIDA helps you address these two issues. The third issue is open data. We want to make sure that the data which is supporting our scientific research and findings is open and accessible to everybody. So the first approach could be using supporting information on a paper, but we all know that a PDF is very often not enough. We could also upload everything in the raw form we have in our disks, but very often this data is not well organized and it's very hard for another person to understand this data and reuse it. The goal is really to make sure we can share data in a fair way, where face that fair stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. However, making data fair is hard. And so the goal here for us, for our open science platform, is to make it very easy to make your data fair. And this will be a goal of Materials Cloud together with AIDA. Finally, we want to make it possible to share and transfer knowledge. This could be sharing a workflow for your co or collaborator. It could be sharing the environment you need to run the workflow. And you want to reduce the email traffic by sharing access to live dashboards online. And this will be what IDA Lab is made for. And you will see this more in a presentation later by Alexandria Kutovic. Let me now go into what Materials Cloud is. Materials Cloud is a web portal uh, which has been online since December 2017 and is composed of five sections learn, work, discover, explore, and archive. I will show and describe each of them in a moment, but let me just first make an analogy. If you want, you already know AIDA, and you can think to AIDA as the engine that powers your simulations and keeps track of your data and the history of your data. In this sense, it's similar to Git, where Git is used to keep track of the history of your source code. In this analogy, Materials Cloud plays the role of GitHub is a place where you can take what gets stored, or in this case, AIDA stored, push it online, make it easy to browse, and make it easy to share with collaborators. Let me now go into the various sections. But before that, let me uh, mention that, that the materials cover has, has now been presented in this paper, which is now on the archive preprint server, and we encourage anybody using uh, materials cover for the research to cite it. The first section I mentioned is the learn section. The learn section contains a number of videos and tutorials by experienced people in the field. And it's a place where you go if you want to learn something new. For instance, uh, there are a number of Marvel events and distinguished lectures by um, very well-known uh, speakers where you can look at the videos of the presentation and the slides and they're fully synchronized. So you can uh, scroll either by using the slides or by using the video. So what is, there for you. Well, what you can do, you can go there and freely access all these videos, lectures, and tutorials by these expert people. And you can learn new theory, new methods, and new codes. Also, this tutorial is going to be available on the Materials Cloud Learn section. The second section of Materials Cloud is work. Work is a section about data generation. There are a number of subsections. The first one is Quantum Mobile. Quantum Mobile is a downloadable virtual machine which comes pre-installed with AIDA and a number of codes like Quantum Espresso, Yambo, Fleur, Siesta, CP2K, and a number more. This also features an, not only a desktop version, but also a cloud version, which can run on a number of cloud platforms, including Amazon, AWS, Google Com Compute Engine, Azure, et cetera. And this is ideal for education. And for instance, the cloud and desktop version have been used for this AIDA virtual tutorial. The AIDA Lab, on the other hand, is something which lives already online and is the ideal interface to create in a very simple way GUIs for your easy turnkey workflows. 
And thanks to the custom app mode extension that we made, this makes your notebook look and feel like real web applications and can be developed by just knowing Python. It uses Jupyter Hub behind the hoods and the Docker spawner of Kubernetes, and you will see more in the presentation by Alexander Yakutovich. In addition, there are tools. Tools are simple web-based applications that allow to run simulations within a few seconds. They are typically used for fast data processing directly on the web browser or to provide interactive visualization. Let me show a couple of tools that are already available. The first one is SIGPATH. It's a tool to show and compute automatically band paths for band structure calculations. And here, picking an example of a center phase, a cubic phase center system, and you can see SIGPATH already computed the Brillian zone, can show you the structure you have, do symmetry analysis, tell you the space group, and suggest you for you the path with the coordinates. And if you want, he has a number of examples and templates for various codes we can, you can just copy paste to run your band structure simulation. The second example I want to show is the phono visualizer, which allows you to upload the results of a phono calculation in a different number of formats. And you can click on the phono dispersion and see how atoms oscillate at a specific point in the Berlin zone and for a specific phono branch. So what is there for you in the world section? Well, you can run your own simulations, either on the computer, on your computer with a quantum mobile, or on the cloud with Ada Lab. In addition, you have free access to a number of pre-processing, post-processing, and visualization tools in the tools section. Let's now go into the, the three sections, archive, discover, and explore, which are dedicated to fair data sharing of your results. The first one I want to introduce you to is the archive. The archive is a repository of research data focusing on computational material science. Once you publish an entry, you get automatically a DOI assigned for you. And the data of the archive is automatically available in a number of places. In addition, the data is indexed by Google Dataset Search and is I mean, this materials cloud is a recommended repository by Nature's Journal of Scientific Data. So if you publish there, you can just put your data on the materials cloud archive. In addition, materials cloud has GoFair implementation network as it's indexed by firesharing.org, v3data.org, and to find by you that. An entry has typical information like authors, affiliation, abstract, and a number of files you can upload. In addition, if you use AIDA, you can enable these two additional links, which allow you to jump and show the same data in the Discover and Explore section. Let's take an example of this project, which was a computational study of two-dimensional exfoliable structures. Since this study was done by AIDA, we could create, first of all, a discover section. A discover section is a section which hosts curated data. So for each structure we found, we publish a page like this, where you see a three-dimensional visualization of the structure and a number of computed properties, including visualization of bound structures and phonons, as you saw before. Now, the interesting thing is that near a number of computations, there is a little AIDA icon. And this icon is a link to the explore section where you can directly browse the AIDA provenance graph as generated by AIDA. So in this sense, the explore section is for raw data as computed by AIDA, and this can be created automatically from your AIDA database. The curated data is something you do on top if you want to present in a very accessible form the data to your peers. And this you already tried for your tutorial, but just to show how it looks like, if you click on this band structure calculation, you jump on the explore section, you see the band structure, you can still visualize it in an interactive way. But in addition, you see this AIDA provenance browser, which says that this band structure is being used by some calculation, but has been generated by this green quantum espresso calculation. And so we can browse the provenance and see the calculation generated by just clicking on it on the provenance browser. And once we click, we jump to the page specific to the calculation that generated it. Here on the left, we see we can row and inspect the row files inputs and outputs of the code, in this case, Quantum Espresso. And on the right, we still have the provenance browser, which allows us to inspect all the inputs and all the outputs of our calculation. In this way, we can, for instance, look into this crystal structure, which we will use as an input. We can visualize it. We can download it in a number of formats. And we can see, again, on the provenance browser, it, it was used by three calculations as an input. But again, it was confused was computed by a calculation. And we can continue browsing the history 
understand exactly how we got to the final result that we published, in this case, the bound structure. So what do these three sections allow you to do? Let's say there are two aspects. One, if you want to access the data. In this case, you can get free access to hundreds of data sets of other researchers, which allow you to reproduce the research. These include inputs and output files, these include the full provenance in many cases, or include just any information and potentially the scripts allow you to reproduce the research. In addition, if you want to contribute and share your research, thanks to the sections. In the archive, you can freely upload your data, even if you didn't use AIDA. You will get a DOI, and we guarantee that your data will be available for at least 10 years. In this way, complying with many requirements of a number of finding aid funding agencies. In addition, if you do use AIDA, you can make your research easily to reproduce, easily reproducible by others by sharing your curated results in the discover sections or by making your AIDA graph easy to browse, uploading it into the explore section. We think that the combination of AIDA and the materials cloud, and in particular the discover, explore, and the archive sections really make it easy to allow, to enable fair compliance sharing of your research data. Indeed, the data is findable thanks to the DOIs and the standardized metadata of the archive. It's accessible because you get very easily accessible web interfaces to browse your data, calculations, and provenance, which can also be created in the Discover section just in your browser without any need of specific technology. The data you produce is going to be interoperable because the data will be produced in the AIDA format, will be linked in the AIDA direct graph, and the data structures will be reusable between different codes. So if you use a crystal structure in AIDA, you can then reuse it. For instance, you create, you relax it in Quantum Espresso, but you can relax it again in VASP. And finally, the data is reusable because you can download it. We encourage open science licenses, open licenses like the Creative Commons. You can reproduce your research data lab thanks to the full provenance. In addition, I would say it's not only reusable, but it is also going to be reproducible thanks to AIDA. In addition, we also want to really help you as a researcher. And for this reason, we provide data management plan templates for anyone who's using the Materials Cloud alone or the Materials Cloud with AIDA. We already have templates for the Swiss National Science Foundation and for the European H2020 projects. You can find templates online and you can just download them and you will find such information. And you can then edit to adapt to your project. So what is this for you? Well, on one side, you can use AIDA Materials Cloud to make all your research fair. In addition, you can get the MP templates to easily prepare your grant applications. Just a few questions and answers about the archives, and this might be relevant to a number of you. First of all, how much data can I upload for every record? So access to any record is for free and open to any researcher in computational material science. Anyone can upload up to five gigabytes for any entry. And if you're using AIDA, since we value the importance of provenance, we allow you for free up to 50 gigabytes. For sponsors and partner projects like Marvel, Max, uh, Swiss universities and the like, larger data sets are allowed, you can just contact us. How long will the data be stored? As I mentioned before, thanks to our partnership with the Swiss the National Supercomputer Center, CSCS, we can provide a guarantee of at least 10 years after submission. We actually pay in advance for this data. And so since the submission, the data will be there with a DOI for at least 10 years, possibly more if possible. Can I update the content of my record? So we want really to value the importance of publishing data, which is available also in the future. For this reason, you can easily change references and keywords without creating a new version, but for any other significant change, change the authors, change the content of the files, we'll have to create a new version. So the question is how I create a new version? Well, that's very easy. Once you create a version already and you published it, you will access to a personal dashboard. In that one, you can log in, select the, version, the, the entry that you want to for which you want to create a new version, you can just click on a button to create a new version. You will get a modified version and you can keep modifying only the things that have changed. Finally, can I reserve a DOI before publication? The answer is yes. As soon as you start creating a draft of your record, you will get assigned a DOI. Of course, the DOI will not resolve yet. You will have to wait for publication, but you can already use the DOI to cite your entry and the DOI will start resolving as soon 
as Matthias Kalarkai moderator of the Public Bureau entry. You will find these and all the other policies under matthiaskalorg policies. Before concluding, let me show you the full platform architecture of Matthias Cloud. This is just a comprehensive slide which shows a bit the technology which of, the, of the whole platform. On the left, you see the front end, the website, what you see in your browser, with the five sections learn, work, discover, explore, and archive running mostly thanks to the AngularJS framework. And you, as a user, can access directly from your browser, or if you are an AIDA user, you can directly access through the AIDA HTTP REST. The front end asks all the data to the Matthias Cloud backend, which runs on our servers and uses this infrastructure as service providers, deployed at CSCS. In particular, it runs some virtual machines. It uses block storage and containers to deploy your application. And the data is stored in long term thanks to OpenStack Swift container technology. And each section has a number, is powered by a number of different technologies, Invenio for the archive, as uh, Lysha for learn, and AIDA for a number of sections related to work, in particular AIDA Lab, and discover and explore. And so for these sections, it's really AIDA, then standard AIDA, which lives behind the hood and provides all its functionality. A REST API to access the data. Core API I've been looking for the past few, few days, allowing you to make queries and to manage codes, data calculations, and workflows, where these run with work, workers in Circus, in the AIDA daemon, and where the storage is, is both on files and databases. And AIDA can access HPC centers and run simulations for you. Before concluding, what are the future plans for Matthias Cloud? There are, I would say, two major goals that we are addressing actively right now. The first one, we want to automate and streamline the creation of tools and discover sections, also by contributed people. But the, the challenge here is mostly technological. What is the technology or the technologies that make it very easy to develop a new app, but also make it very easy to, for us to maintain it in the long term? You already have sub-selected the technologies to a few of them, the four you, you see here, and we're trying to identify if there is one which can cover all use cases and we can officially support. In addition, we want to make it easy for you to test your application without going through us as administrators. And so we are deploying an infrastructure thanks to the Docker technology, which allows you to create a new section and test it out without having to ask us anything and just ask us for a final publication. In a similar way, Explore sections are already can already be created almost automatically from a databases. And as you saw, if you have your own AIDA instance running even locally, you can already use the uh, Explore provenance browser online to look at your data. What we want to do is to make it very easy and simplify and speed up the integration of new contributed AIDA databases without the need of an administrator. Now you can share your AIDA export files on the archive, and anybody can get them and unload them and install them locally, but you still need to ask one of us if you want to have your data published as a new explore section. We want to make it very easy and make it closer to what now happens on GitHub where you can use git pull and git push. So we would like to have eventually something where you can do where git pull and push and upload your databases to the materials called explore section. But to, before concluding, I want to thank all the funding agencies that have made this possible. In particular, I want to mention the Swiss National Science Foundation Marvel NCCR, which is a project which is funding research in discovery and design of novel materials. Uh, this has been running already for seven years and will run at least two more and potentially other four if funding agencies approve the project. And this is really supporting the Open Science Platform. The European Max Center of Excellence already uh, the first phase, 2015, 2018, and now the second phase, for the convergence of high throughput computing, high performance computing, and high performance data analytics, thanks to AIDA. And then a number of other projects, the H2020 Marketplace project that provides material simulation services and data, also in collaboration with industries. H2020 Intersect project, which uh, works on the development of automated modeling of complex devices via AIDA, like transport calculations. A number of uh, private companies which are powering research which are funding research powered by EDA, in particular in uh, discovery of lithium-ion batteries. 
The Swiss University's P5 Materials Cloud project, which helps transition Materials Cloud from a, from a web service maintained by us to a self-sustaining service. And finally, the EPFL Open Science Fund OSCAR for creating an educational hub for researchers, but also for teaching. And you hear more from Dodu in the next presentation. This will allow us to have over 15 people in the next few years that can maintain and guarantee the support of both AIDA and the Materials Cloud in the coming years. With this, I thank you for your attention. This is the Materials Cloud link, and I hope we'll have fun using the Materials Cloud.